Positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality. And the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life, well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week. To help constantly remind you of what matters most, you are it. And I'm your host for the day, Erica Middlemiss. I am just another reflection and extension of you who will be here filling in for our beloved host, Brandon Beecham, leading the way to ensure your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome back. Today is a magical Monday, and I am super excited to be here with you on another one of these magical Mondays. It just so happens that I get to do magical Mondays a lot, which is awesome. Brandon's away at Lucidity Festival, so I get to steer the ship once again. So super happy and very grateful to be here. Today, I thought I would pick up on reading Return of the Bird Tribes by Ken Carey. I read the first six chapters of this book on previous episodes. They I started on uh, 631 and then again read two chapters on 660 and then 670. So if you wanted to go back and listen to the first six chapters of this book, they're on those episodes. I'm going to skip a few chapters and move to chapter 12 today. Um, This chapter is called The Great Day of Purification. And I like this chapter because it is like a handbook for ascension, Um, how to get to the new earth type of chapter. So we're going to get into that. But before we do... I'd like to read a review like we always do. We so appreciate when anyone writes a review and lets us know how you like the show and it always helps new listeners find us. So we are super appreciative to get them. I'm going to read two today. The first one is by Bartleby the Listener. Excellent. Five stars. Bartleby says, give it a listen. Great podcast. Short and sweet. Thank you, Bartleby. We appreciate you so much for that. And then the next one is called Hashtag Woke, another five-star review by Awakening to My New Path. It says, love that every time I listen to your podcast, it answers a question I have recently asked the universe. Hmm. Listen with an open mind and heart, and you receive a very positive answer from this podcast. Sending much love and gratitude to the Positive Head team. That's awesome and so true, right? How many of us can listen to this podcast and it resonates with our thoughts, with our daily activities, with a message that we need to hear. It answers our questions. It's so beautiful. So thank you, Brandon, for all that you do. And thank you, Awakening to My New Path, for writing that review. We appreciate you so much. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while now, you've definitely heard this book mentioned a bunch of times if you haven't heard the first six chapters of it. Um, But just in case you don't know about the book or what it's about, it is a channeled material written by Ken Carey. And I'm going to read just a little bit of the introduction so you can get an idea of what is in the book. 
We have been sent to illuminate your understanding of the present human condition and to take you on a journey through significant moments of angelic human exchange that you might more fully sense that great momentum behind the power that is now breaking through into surface human events. When you understand the past as we do, you will understand the inevitability and imminence of the Creator's awakening in the human family. You will be in a position to more fully cooperate with the Great Spirit's purposes, for you will at last recognize them as your own. And so began these communications. So, like I said, we're going to start on Chapter 12. It's called The Great Day of Purification. Listen, O humans of this present world. Listen as the sparrow listens for her lover's call on the breeze. We are speaking to you in your dreams, in snatches of song heard in passing, from the mouths of children, from these pages. But more than this, we are speaking to you from the center of your innermost being. Hear us and remember yourselves. We return to human consciousness, bringing a time of new creation and the information required for humans to understand the changing conditions of the age. We are here to merge, to blend with your human egos, to help your race become the central guidance system of a vast new being. We are here to help the great spirit incarnate in the people of the four races. We have come to initiate the most joyous age this earth has ever known, a thousand year period of earth healing and renewed harmony that will see the four legged flourish, the two legged awaken, and the rivers run pure and humankind in conscious exchange with the stars. And after this millennium, has in turning seasons past, you, a new being of translucent biology, will depart for the vast uncharted ocean of the Milky Way to give the freedom of the Thunderbird's flight as a gift to every star and every world. In a multiplication of love affairs that will go on until the end of time, you and your race will seed the galaxies with intelligent biological life. The potential of this universe is limitless. Her revelations of potential are infinite beyond number. But there are no star wars or advanced and fearsome civilizations beyond your own. Because if civilizations are fearsome, they do not advance beyond your own. They become extinct to rise up in the soils of another world a little wiser until they learn. Our task today is to help you remove the blinders that historically have distorted your perception. Realize that what you feel in your heart determines what you see. Perception rides upon the expressions of the heart like a canoe rides upon the waters. When your heart expresses fear in any of its turbulent forms, your understanding becomes jumbled, confused. You perceive through the waves of illusion. But when you love, you understand, for then you share the vision, the very perception of God. Return, like the salmon, to the place of your origin. Birth your moments only in love. You can root your life in fear and know the predictability of granite, the strength of marble, and what security there is in limestone's patient changing. Or, you can root your life in love and join us in helping to ease the human world through the awesome changes of these times. The great day of purification has begun, a short but essential cycle of division that will gather those who promote fear and violence and separate them from this season of the world as chaff is separated from wheat at threshing. During these next two and a half decades, humankind will experience this separation a transformation in human consciousness more fundamental than the development of language, more significant than the shift to agriculture, more meaningful than any historical revolution. A new era is dawning. As the sun rises, the shadows become sharper and more clearly defined. As the energies of love grow stronger, the shadows of fear become more visible than before. To some, it may even appear that they have grown in number and strength, but this is not so. What was hidden has simply become revealed, that it might be healed and brought to peace. Action born from fear is becoming less effective with each passing day. Institutions, traditions, and societies forged in fear have already begun to falter. Change is occurring everywhere. For as the planetary awakening proceeds, 
the consciousness that determines the quality and nature of life itself is changing. Amidst all these changes, more and more people are turning to God for guidance and direction. They are coming to dwell in the place of their own inner spirits and to recognize their spirits as expressions of God. That is where God asks to be trusted, in the human heart. That is where the awakening takes place. The Creator asks not to be worshipped in an external image, but to be acknowledged in each human being. You are all God's beings in potential, with no reason not to become God beings in reality. Trust yourself. Trust your natural response to each situation. The action arising from within your heart is not going to be destructive. It is going to suggest the most creative path to walk in answer to your situation and your world. When you trust yourself, you are trusting in the wisdom that designed you. This is how you trust in God. It is not an abstract thing. Trust in God is trusting in the God who lives within you. Trusting in your spirit's ability to respond to each situation beautifully, impeccably, individually, creatively. When you doubt your native ability to breathe the air of spirit into your world and create according to your divine thought, you are doubting both God and the universe. You are rejecting life's most precious gift to you, your own inner knowing, and you are presuming to replace it with values, judgments, and opinions you have acquired secondhand. Without the acquisition of another skill, without the acquisition of anything but complete and total trust in God and in yourself, you have everything you need to interact optimally, creatively, and productively with every situation you encounter. There is no exception. Perhaps as much as 70 to 80% of your current typical behavior is exactly what you would do in a fully awakened state. Accept yourself. Feel clear about all you do. As you do this, you begin to introduce into your actions the very power of the Creator. There is a movement of spirit that proceeds from within your heart to greet the world with the clarity of perfect action. That movement is intuitive. It is your direct link with the source of all of life. In the instant you know what to do, and in that same instant, you flow into the perfect action required. Trust your intuition. It is an arrow whose shaft has been carved straight and smooth, unerring, and true it flies to its mark. Can the ponderous tread of the rational mind be compared to the swift, sure flight of an arrow? Reason is designed to support, not to lead your action. It is meant to help you implement the purposes of your heart. It is not meant to determine them. Trust in God by honoring and trusting your intuitive sense. No God would create a creature without the wisdom to chart its own course. Trust the nature of your own design. God's actions appear within your awareness as the most natural thing for you to do. Following them will reconnect you with the awesome powers of the universe, for all your actions will then be in harmony with the underlying intent of the life force itself. The incarnational process is a process of relaxation. It is a process of relaxing all thinking that is born from straining and holding on. It is a process of choosing not to struggle against the current of what comes to you through the natural movement of your heart. This does not mean that you close your eyes to the world around you and try to think only good thoughts. No, you can look at the hunger in Africa and do something about it. You can look at the need for greater communication between nations and do something about it. You can perceive needs in any area and take action, motivated by love, to alleviate the suffering in that area. But though they may encounter problem areas, when your thoughts spring from intuition, they are not sustained through tension, anxiety, or fear. They are characterized by God's love flowing like a powerful energy through your understanding. Happy, knowing that you are there. Grateful, because you know you can make a difference. Invite the bird tribes into your awareness. Make a home for eternal spirit in your heart. Notice what thoughts create tension or anxiety and choose to release them. The degree that anxiety taints your motivation, to that same degree you are less effective in all you do. 
For spirit is then denied access to your mind and heart, and you, in a literal sense, are not fully present. The process of relaxing all thoughts that require tension to sustain them is a process of relaxing habits of the past and awakening to the reality of your own spiritual presence. It is a process of losing interest in fearful ways of walking upon the earth and choosing to create your world in love through the action of your open heart. Should you perceive a problem, you surround that problem with love. You define it in love. You recognize that it is caused by the lack of love that lies behind all problems. And with love, you introduce the understanding that provides the solution. On the incarnational journey, you lose interest in all that perpetuates this rapidly passing state of illusion on the earth, and you become keenly interested in what is in the process of replacing it. You begin to perceive an emerging sacred reality. In the whispering of the pines, in the gentle call of the morning dove, in a child's sleepy yawn, the new world comes dawning. Through the facade of the late 20th century human world, it shines. A world of shimmering potential. A world of beautiful light. A world where human beings do not behave violently toward one another in thought, word, or deed. It is a world of understanding and cooperation. A world of abundance in which the human spirit, freed from the shackles of self-centeredness, flies on the wings of love, leaving a trail of joy, wonder, and undreamt of beauty wherever it passes. You do not have to be a scholar to notice the direction and momentum of history. Even a child can observe these times and know that fundamental changes are being wrought deep in the collective heart of humankind. Something is changing on the surface as well. You are here to help it change easily. You have only to make the choice to shift the center of your motivation from fear to love. Make the choice. Begin to identify the working of fear in your life and recognize it for what it is. There are certain human fears that may have small supportive roles to play in the course of this transition. If you stepped out in front of a speeding automobile, for example, you would be grateful for the fear that would cause you to jump back out of its way. But fear's intended role is a small one. Compared to the historical state in which fear has been the keeper of your power, fear's true role is a small one indeed. When you choose to relax, you break away from the control of fear's conditioning. You break the bonds that have historically enslaved your race. In the expression and restful enjoyment of love, you come to know the energies of the Great Spirit. Pouring forth from the heart of the Nagual are powerful streams of energy, which we of the angelic tribes channel into the emotional field around the earth. These energies are designed for creation, but when they meet with disharmony, as in the case with your present-day human world, they translate into energies of healing, forgiveness, and education. We can direct these energies in a general sense, but before they can reach their full power, they must be consciously directed by people who are awake and incarnate on earth. Only then do they enter the realms of specific application that will release their fullness and during the remainder of this cycle, complete the healing of your race. You are being invited to open your heart and make a welcome for these immense creative energies. You are being invited to help direct the powers of eternal love. There are two requirements. The first is that your heart be open, loving, and able to channel, at least to some degree, the love of God. The second requirement is that your identity be fully in the present moment. If your identity is based in your past experiences, you are not truly present. What looks through your eyes is then only a fictitious creature, an image, an illusion. Too much thinking about oneself is the greatest thing that keeps human identity from being fully present. For when you are constantly self-reflecting, you are too caught up in the past and future to notice the present around you. You are doubting your own power. You are not vibrating fast enough to channel the immense energies of creation because your attention is scattered and you're close to the one moment where the love that would quicken you exists, the moment where you are. 
There is nothing wrong with human individuality. It is as necessary to God as leaves are to a tree. But historically, you have made a God of leaves and have forgotten the tree at the source of your life. If you truly wish to channel God's blessings, begin thinking of yourself less as an isolated self and more as one of a family. You are all of human society. You are the world and all within it. When you relax into perception of other as self, when you think of yourself as the pair of eyes into which you look, when you care about those around you as much as you once cared about yourself, then the energies of healing and transformation are able to flow freely through you. Your eyes, your ears, your every sense is attuned to the richness of the surrounding world. All your senses are operating at a rapid enough level of perception, correction, and decision-making to keep up with the energies pouring into your heart from the Great Spirit, who comes to fill the needs of the world through you. Love vibrates rapidly. Fear has a slower rate of vibration. Those who channel fearful, fearful energies find that as time passes, the fear vibration grows heavy, depressing. Eventually, it brings sleep, gloominess, discouragement, despair. The love vibration brings enthusiasm, energy, interest, perception. And that is what your world needs in this age. Your love and your perception. That is what will heal the world. Clear and undistorted perception flowing through you that is not self-reflective in the egoic sense, but self-reflective in the sense of knowing the God within. The self to reflect on is the self that you truly are, the creator, the eternal one, the spirit of God. You reflect on those aspects of the great spirit that manifest before you as the men, the women, the children, the plants, the animals, the crystals, the creatures of the world entrusted to your care. First and foremost, you are a steward of your immediate world. You care for the earth, not in some nebulous way, but directly as an individual representative of God. You take responsibility for bringing love and understanding into every environment through which you pass. As the birds welcome the morning sun with their song, when you act totally in love, you welcome the great spirit into your world. You become a conscious cell in the awakening earth. The physical atoms of your body sing together, vibrating in perfect harmony. Your integrity and unity of being Your integration of purpose and expression brings resonance to everything you are and to everything you perceive. You become a natural channel for the vast and powerful energies of creation. Through you, they flow into the healing and transformative work of these decades. Pulsing with the atoms of your body, pulsing in perfect rhythm with the world around you, you know yourself as a localized expression of your own universal being. You know your first self as the great spirit who is awakening within the human populations of the earth. And as a son son or daughter of the natural world, you know your second self as an individual human being within those populations. As one who has awakened the bird tribe energy, your eyes behold the world around you as the divine world within, and you know you are inside. You, the creator, and the world are one. You are awake. Your biosphere is active and alive. Just as bees are in communication with the spirit of their hive, you know in an instant all that is transpiring throughout the field of collective human consciousness. From the collective field of your larger awareness of the earth, you are able to instantaneously access the knowledge you need in the moment. You use your individual free will to pursue God's will, and you know God's will as your own. Your identity rides the crest of unity's wave at the very meeting place of creator and creation. You are free, immersed in universal currents of love. The great spirit's own consciousness flows into your heart and perceives all through you. This is the gift to the innocent, to see through the eyes of God. And with that, the chapter ends. 
So I hope you all enjoyed that. And just to recap some of the major amazing points in this chapter, remember to trust your intuition. Remember, you are divine. You are the creator. You have the power. Trust in yourself. Trust in your intuition. Make your choices based on love. Open your heart. And remember to always live fully present in every moment. With that, everybody, I'm out of here for the day. We are out of illusory time. I appreciate you for hanging out with me today. I love you all. I'm going to leave you with a song today. And who knows if this has been played before. I wouldn't doubt it if it has, but I'm going to play it again because it's a great song and it's super fitting. It's by Dea Dova, Return of the Bird Tribes. Enjoy, everybody. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear Brandon constantly say, it is a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration, and if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place we know of to do it period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out.
inside 